The thing about dog training is that you're never done training a good dog. You want to teach behaviors when they're young and then reinforce, 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 reinforce throughout the lifetime of that dog. I'm Kaylin. Welcome back to Fable Hill Farm. Today I'm going to be giving you an update on my livestock guardian dog, Uhtred, who is a Great Pyrenees that just turned a year old. So stay tuned as I talk about some of my successes, a lot of my failures, what I'm feeding him, what we've been working on, and uh, how everything is going. And if you're not already familiar with, I do have a playlist on training a livestock guardian dog from eight weeks to reliable guardian, however long that might take. And you can check out that playlist. I'll link it down below. First, I must preface this video by saying, I am not a professional nor licensed dog trainer. I am not a veterinarian. I simply am obsessed with training dogs and I have studied things about dogs such as dog behavior, dog evolution, the human dog relationship for over 20 years. Uhtred is my first ever livestock guardian dog. I am not an expert. He is the only LGD I have ever worked with or had any real experience with. And I am just simply sharing what this process has been like with all of you who may be interested in getting a livestock guardian dog or maybe in the beginning, you know, phases of having an LGD puppy and looking for just, you know, information for training tips. He lives full time with our bucks. He has been with stock his entire life. He is from working parents off a working farm. He was born and raised in a barn since the two days that we had him in the garage when we first got him. His job is to guard the goats. He also just through, you know, proximity uh, protects our poultry as well. <laughs> Back. He had a couple of um, unfortunate interactions with our electric fence when he was young, which in a sense is a good thing because he learned that the fence hits very hard. It will shock you. Don't go near it. Great Pyrenees, if you're not already aware, are very known for roaming and for wandering. And that can be a really bad thing when you have a farm, depending on where you live. You know, if you're talking, you have hundreds or thousands of acres that these dogs are working on, then maybe not so much of a problem. But when you are in a community, you know, even in a, a very agriculturally minded community like we are, we have a dairy farm just on the road. We are surrounded by crop fields, and then we have the one neighbor on the other side uh, who has, you know, a, a couple of horses. This is a farming community. However, none of my neighbors would take too kindly to my dog wandering through their property. And I certainly wouldn't appreciate um, or be okay with any dogs, you know, other dogs wandering onto my so it was very important from day one that we make sure that Uhtred was going to stay in the fence. Now we have a perimeter fencing and then we have the electric fencing. In the buck pen, the electric wire is run on the bottom. And we also use in conjunction with that some Premier One uh, electric net fencing, the sheep and goat fencing. The bucks are rubbing their heads on the outside of the barn or something. So. I apologize for the sudden noise. Boys, go away. Quit that. You're being loud. I'm filming. So when you use electric fencing, um, you want the animals to be shocked and to learn. It's hot. Hey, don't touch that. Don't challenge the fence. The good news is Uhtred never challenges the fence. He never tries to escape. He has never wandered. And good boy. Come on, Uhtred. Good boy. Good boy.
That's a good boy. Yeah. Come here, bud. So Uhtred had a couple bad experiences with getting shocked. And he had a couple of scary experiences in his mind with a gate. And so he's had a lot of um, continual like lingering fear of gates and of like the sound of like a chain rattling on a gate. I have a double sided clip with a chain that I use to clip the bucks up to the gate when I'm like, you know, trimming feet or doing maintenance on them. And so he's got a lot of nerves around that. And we've definitely worked on it a lot and he's come a long way. And if I do let him out of the gate intentionally, he will always come back. He, you know, might run around, mark his territory, sniff things. I do let him play with my dogs and that's a separate discussion. I've definitely <coughs> talked about that before in previous videos. And there's a lot of debate about that. I'm not gonna get into that in this video. For our family, for what works for us in our situation, he does have a very limited relationship with our house dogs, our farm dogs, who, you know, he's known since he was a puppy. If I let him out, he always comes back. He's got pretty good recall, though. Utred, come! Utred, come! Come! Good boy. Good. Sit. Good boy. Okay, but recently we had some type of experience that left a very negative lasting impression on him. And that's something I've been working through with him for the last few weeks. I'm not sure what happened because it didn't happen when I was here, but maybe he got shocked by the fence. It could be that there were coyotes, you know, were yipping and being super active at night. And maybe he tried like rounding the bucks up or, you know, the bucks were being rowdy and he got knocked into the fence or he got hurt by the bucks. I'm really not sure what happened. This is all just purely guessing at this point, but something happened and I came out the next morning and he was not okay with me. He was very skittish. He was super stressed out. Um, very odd behavior. At that same time, he went through some type of like GI distress. I don't know if he ate something or if he, you know, was exposed to some type of toxin. I have no idea. I treated him for potential poison exposure with activated charcoal. And I did um, a lot as far as treating him for his GI upset. He was having diarrhea and not eating totally off his food for a couple of days. And so that was a whole ordeal. And we've been working through that the last few weeks. You know, I roasted pumpkins from my garden for him and fed him a bunch of bone broth and eggs and really kept his, you know, kibble, um, the amount of kibble I was feeding him less and was just really trying to strengthen that system, giving him slippery elm and, you know, giving him all kinds of stuff, probiotics for his GI system. And that seems to have settled down. His appetite has mostly returned to normal. As far as feeding, I'll touch on that. So we feed him a Purina Pro Plan, um, all life stages. And I like to cycle through some different um, varieties because, you know, eating just like chicken, 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 or beef, 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 isn't good for any animal, humans, or, you know, dogs, um, as far as having a balanced diet. And then I do mix in another type of dog food. And again, I cycle that as well with my dogs. And that just gives him a more balanced um, nutrition as far as what he's getting in his kibble. The Purina, the Pro Plan, Sport, all life stages um, is what I switched him to when I took him off the puppy kibble, but it still is giving him that sufficient um, nutrition for being a large breed dog and still technically being a puppy, even though he's really big, he is still in fact a puppy. He's only a year old. And then on top of that, because in the grand scheme of things, that is not enough nutrition for a dog of his size and a working dog, you know, even if that's a high quality kibble. And look, there are definitely more expensive dog foods out there and you can go all raw. And that is of course much better for a dog, but if you don't do it right or you can't afford to do it well, then you shouldn't feed raw at all. So I so give Uhtred a lot of supplemental items in his food to help to really push that nutrition to the next level because he is growing, he is a large breed puppy and he needs a lot of you know, um, protein, he needs a lot of calcium, he needs all the things to grow healthy bones, healthy joints and to be um, you know, uh, uh, well balanced as far as his 
his growth so that when he's an adult, his body holds up to the test of time. So right now is critical as far as nutrition with an LGD, you know, from puppy to the first few years, like you have got to feed them well. And if you can't afford to feed them well, or you don't know how to feed them well, then either consider not getting one or really talk to somebody who, you know, is going to be able to help you to figure out what does that animal need. So we feed them a lot of eggs, both cooked eggs and raw eggs. I give them a lot of additional fats such as um, olive oil or fish oil or things like that. I feed him raw goat's milk from our Nigerian dwarf herd and I feed him like a lot of meat scraps from the kitchen, bone broth, which has so many wonderful nutritional components to it. But the thing I didn't realize up until recently that I just dropped the ball on completely was getting him more comfortable with being brushed on his back end, his tail. Now I brush him and he's fine with that though. He's, you know, wiggly and he, this is like a constant like spinning in circles, but he'll let me brush him. I can clip his nails. Um, you know, it's really important to be able to do those kinds of basic things with your dog because I've never had a dog that needed extensive grooming before. And there are different coat types with Pyrenees. Some Pyrenees have a um, what I guess you would call an incorrect coat. And I don't know if that's what Uhtred's would be considered. And that has to do with breeding and genetics and all of that. Um, but he gets matted very easily. And we have a lot of burdock in our pasture, which is something we'd love to be able to eradicate, but haven't, you know, gotten to that point yet. Uh, so we get a lot of burrs from the burdock when it goes to seed and then the animals get covered in burrs. Uhtred gets so unbelievably matted and especially on his like back end and he doesn't want me to brush that. He has like a terrible sense of anxiety about being brushed in his back end. And so I need to actually like, I've, I've cut away a little bit with scissors to try to thin that hair out, but I really need to just like shave right around, you know, that back area. So that way it's not potentially like when he you know, goes to the bathroom, um, anything getting matted into his fur. Uh, in the winter, that's not an issue, but in the, you know, summertime when it's hot, that could be an issue for a dog. If, you know, they're they're matted up in their back end and then they're, they're going to the bathroom and then that's getting caught in their fur. And then you can have issues with like, you know, bugs like maggots and stuff like that and get terrible infections. It'd be horrible for something like that to happen. So I actually think what I'm going to have to do, unfortunately, is... Um, I need to talk to my vet, my livestock vet, I don't think deals with dogs. So that might be problematic. I have to call another vet um, and see if she can't help me out. But I do need to get some type of sedative for him so I can sedate him enough to actually really shave that area well before uh, spring so that I can ensure that he's not going to have any issues like that going into the warm months as far as, um, you know, dealing with larvae, fly larvae or anything like that. So. That was a really big mistake on my end. I will never make that mistake again with another LGD and not like just going over the top with reinforcing like, hey, all types of grooming in every area of the body is okay and they need to be comfortable with that. And I would strongly suggest to anyone with an LGD puppy or if you are thinking about getting one or soon getting one, like work on all of that. Groom, 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 touch every part of them constantly until they're just so comfortable with it because that is something that's really unfortunate and I so regret not doing. I think he's a little young to start training another dog, um, but ideally we will get a second LGD in the next couple of years to work with him. I also would really like to get him in with the does and would like to put in jump gates between the two pastures so that he can go between the bucks and the does to help him to better protect the property. Um, but right now, because he is so young, they say with LGDs that switch in their brain, that guardian switch really doesn't activate until they're two years old. And he is only again, just a little over a year. I don't want to put him in with the does because he still does display some puppy behavior, such as, you know, excitedly chasing the stock um, when he gets, you know, a little riled up or the bucks get riled up. No way, dude. Don't be chasing your goats, buddy. It's okay. Come here. 
Don't chase your goats. I know I, I snuck up on you, huh? And I don't ever want to risk him unintentionally hurting um, either a pregnant doe, causing her potentially to abort from stress or hurting a kid. You know, the bucks are rowdy. And the reason why I moved him from the doe pen when he was here after the first couple of months to the buck pen is because he was getting, you know, a little bit excitable oh, and yeah. the does really didn't like it. They were bred. I didn't want to stress him out. And so I moved him in with the bucks who can handle a dog being rowdy. And now don't misunderstand me. He is absolutely not allowed to chase stock, to mouth stock, nothing ever. That is not acceptable behavior. And he has been corrected every time he has ever been seen to do such a thing. And he knows he is not allowed to do that. But he is a puppy. He is a giant puppy. And there are times when he just gets excited, when he's got a lot of energy. He's got that big puppy energy. And so there are times when I might catch him, you know, if the bucks are running the fence line, I might catch him running after the bucks and maybe, you know, putting his mouth on their back end or something. Um, he gets a verbal correction for it. He will stop immediately because he has been extensively trained not to do that. But that doesn't mean that he isn't, you know, sometimes trying to get away with things when I'm not around. I'm home pretty much all the time and I do, you know, like to come outside and check on my stock throughout the day. And I, you know, there's been very few times that I've seen him doing that, but it's not to say that he doesn't. He's not perfect. He's only a year old. So that's something that I, I guess I want to stress is that, you know, when you have a dog that is like Uhtred, who's, you know, living with a stock full time, who's reliable with stock, even at such a young age, like they are still going to have behavioral issues and they're still going to make mistakes and again you need to keep reinforcing these behaviors because no dog is perfect and i would say as far as lgd go i got pretty lucky because he's been you know amazing with stock since day one and certainly not all dogs are capable of doing that and might need different living situations or different you know um considerations as far as how they're penned where they're penned um you know we spent a lot of time i spent a lot of time um supervising him with the stock just really watching him and giving constant correction uh until i felt like it was safe to leave him unattended with the stock and even then you know i was creeping around a corner we used you know um e-collars as part of our training a lot of verbal correction some dogs are really food motivated he is not. Uh, some dogs are very motivated by like petting and verbal reward, you know, good boy, good boy. Uh, that's him. He, he does really well with a uh, verbal, um, reinforcement and he does really well with verbal correction. Every dog is different. So that's just something that you need to think about. You know, not all dogs are going to respond the same way. Again, I say all the time, I got so lucky with him as my first LGD because he has been overall just amazing. He, he just, you know, it's like he just knew that I needed a dog that was going to be, um, easy. <laughs> And when I say easy, uh, it hasn't been easy to train him. And the dog that you see is the result of countless hours of training, of watching, of reinforcement, of correction, of, you know, spending time with and, and not only bonding with him, but, you know, watching him and being supportive of him bonding with the stock in a healthy, appropriate way. You got to work with your dog. You can't just throw a dog out in the pen and expect instinct to kick in and protect your stock because that is an absolute recipe for disaster. But the dog that I got, um, I was told that getting a dog who as a puppy was like calmer and a little bit more shy was going to result in a lower drive, more relaxed LGD. I have been out here for now hours between doing chores and filming this video and I want to go inside and warm up my hands and get some fresh coffee. I'm about halfway through this thermos and I mean it's a Yeti but it's you know it's not anything like fresh coffee when it's been in here since 6 20 this morning it's now like nine o'clock so yeah i'm gonna do those things but first i wanted to touch on um a couple other points i don't want to forget these weight is something i want to talk about now 
Utrecht was really thin for a while and you might have just looked at him and said really thin for a while he's really thin right now well he's he's lean and you'll hear a lot of people say lean dogs are healthy dogs and that's true especially when you're talking about a a a puppy and b a large breed dog um if that dog is carrying around more weight it's going to be a lot harder on the developing joints as far as um you know how successfully they're able to grow and develop without the additional press pressure of excess weight so right now i would say for him his body style again there's all different kinds of dogs and there are different body styles of pyrenees like if you look at um say like if you google you know great pyrenees um akc you're gonna see a completely different looking dog than what Uchid looks like and what a lot of working Pyrenees look like just because they're bred, you know, with different genetics or bred with different considerations in mind. Believe it or not, not all registered show quality even dogs are bred to be successful working dogs. Not all dogs that can show successfully transition well into um, a working position because they just their bodies aren't as functional and even though they're being bred you know by breed standard that doesn't always mean what serves well in the show ring serves well in a you know a, a working scenario it did used to be a bit thinner and i did have some concerns i think i talked about that previously and what i did was i increased his nutritional intake not quite sure what to think about it thinks it smells good and started adding in eggs and he gets about eight to 10 eggs a week. Um, and, and eggs are a complete protein and they're super nutritious. And our chickens are fed a really high quality feed. They get to forage. So as far as egg quality goes, they're about some of the best eggs you could possibly eat. They're delicious, they're nutritious, nutrient dense. And so adding in the eggs, I think really helped him. Um, you know, we were already doing, again, a lot of those feed additives, um, you know, meat scraps and bone broths and fats and things like that so adding in the additional eggs helped but I also I wormed them I dewormed them I should say um using several different chemical dewormers and that made a big difference because he is exposed to a lot of parasites through the goats and um you know all animals have some type of a parasite load you don't want to just kill all the parasites that's not the goal in uh, you know livestock management is to have an animal that has a healthy worm load that they can handle and manage without um you know their resources and their body being uh, drained or strained and he you know he probably doesn't do it as much now but especially when he was younger he's you know eating goat poop and, and just being a puppy and putting things in his mouth and exploring the world through his mouth as puppies do so i do think he had a bit higher parasite load than what was healthy for him and I dewormed him and I feel like that made a big difference for him and now I have a couple of I have an herbal dewormer that's designed for dogs that I've been using with him a little bit just periodically and also some homeopathics I've been using for both parasites and bacteria um, but at this point I'm not worried about his worm load he he looks lean I know but he actually has, you know, good flesh on him. He's just a really lean dog right now. He's super active. You know, he's got like a two acre pasture out there and he runs around all day and all night. I mean, he sleeps a lot during the day, but he's super active and he's just healthy. And I know when he's older, he will put on weight, he will fill out. But right now he's just a lean young dog and that's okay. So I just wanted to touch on that. There's a difference between like skinny and lean. And when you have a livestock guardian dog and you are able to observe the way they interact with stock and you get to see that instinct and that, um, you know, thousands of years of selective breeding for these behaviors, it's amazing to witness. It truly is. I am humbled continuously when I see the things that he does with the goats and I see how he responds to different like environmental uh, stressors it's like here in coyotes he'll go and you know he will literally round up the box and kind of you know nip at him a little bit chase him around and push them into the shed, shed because then he he feels like he's got them better protected and um you know I've, I've just seen the way he observes uh 
what's happening around him and responds. And LGDs are bred to be critical, independent thinkers. And that's why like training a lot of um, commands with an LGD is A, nonsensical and B, pointless because they're just at some point they're going to decide that they don't want to listen to you because they have been bred again to be independent thinkers so he is doing you know what he needs to do on a day-to-day -day basis to do his job and to do it effectively and i'm not sitting there holding his paw telling him like good boy do that no don't do that you know he's making his own decisions all day long when things happen you know so um it's just funny because he he doesn't want to come in the house and he just he loves his life and he you know he thinks he's a goat he's been raised with goats his whole life he he's just you know he's he's doing his thing and he's working and he is engaged and uh joyful and i see him run through the pasture and you know be with his goats and it's just really cool and i'm really grateful to have again i know i've said this a bunch throughout the video i'll say it one more time i'm so grateful to have gotten such a wonderful first lgd who's been really responsive who is um a, a wonderful partner in training any dog and i've talked about this more extensively in other videos and if you're interested in my training style i definitely recommend you check those videos out on um you know the partnership that happens between man and dog or woman and dog and human and dog in a um a training relationship in a bonding relationship in a healthy long-term relationship with a dog you you need to have this this sense of trust in communication in um you know in love and respect and uh, Uhtred's just been such a great dog to work with. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in following along with my journey in training Uhtred, if you are thinking about getting an LGD soon, if you already have one and you're just looking for training tips or advice or just a different perspective on training, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so YouTube lets you know when I post new videos. And don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video, uh, any questions you might have. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.